Hello and welcome to another Intro to Programming tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to be solving the following business problem that is basically from your assignment. We're going to be writing a pseudocode, of course we're also going to be drawing a flowchart and we're going to be writing a GUI app and a console app for calculating gross pay for an hourly employee. So we will now going to be looking at the input process and output for this code. In order to calculate the gross pay for somebody who's working hourly, we need to get some input from user. So generally, the input that comes from user is the number of hours worked and the hourly rate. On the other hand, on the processing side, we need to be able to calculate gross pay, which is a formula of gross pay equals hours worked times hourly rate we're not going to be considering any overtime in this particular example but probably next week we're going to incorporate the overtime so the only output that's going to come out of this program will going to be the person's gross pay that's basically my input my process my output now let's go to the flowchart. In the flowcharting, the first thing that we do is we need to bring in our start button and then we're going to be ending it the stop button. So we need to be bringing in the start shape. So here's my start shape. This basically is start. Next I need to do is I need to take two inputs from user. So we're going to be bringing in the input symbol which is a parallelogram. So I will going to have my input statements one by one. So each input statement will going to be preceded by a message that will going to ask user what exactly I want from the user. So I'm going to be using display uh, enter hours worked. So that's my first statement for the user. Let me increase the size of this. Then I need to actually take this input from the user. So I will going to say, okay, I would now like to take an input. However, there's one important thing that we forgot to incorporate thus far, which is we need three sets of variables in order to do our job, hours work, hourly rate, and gross pay. So before we start any of our input business, we need to be declaring those variables. So let me bring in a rectangular box, which will going to help us declare our variables. So we will going to be bringing in this rectangular shape which is for a regular process and in this rectangular shape we're going to be saying okay I would like to declare three sets of variables one will be the hours, one will be the rate and one will going to be my pay. Okay so now in the hours work I will going to be input hours. I'll take these two boxes that I've created and I'll duplicate them then the third box I'll say enter hourly rate and in the, la in the fourth box I'll say enter rate. Now I need to bring in a process box so I duplicated my declare box because process boxes are also rectangular just like the declare boxes are and then I'm going to be writing here set which is the command uh, as all statements must start with an action verb set my pay equals to my hours times my rate and then I will going to be displaying this output on the screen so this will going to be my display statement display your gross pay is and then followed by pay and finally after this I will going to put a stop to my logic. So pretty much this is the flowchart for what I need to be doing here. I declared my variables, I accepted two inputs from user, the hours and the rate. I multiplied them to calculate my pay and I'm, then I'm displaying the pay back to user. Now this will going to be the exact same thing that we're going to be going in my pseudocode. So let me bring about my pseudocode here. So pseudocode we're going to have my start logic, and we're going to have my stop logic, and everything else we're going to go right in between. I need to be declaring three sets of variables. 
However, one extra thing I need to consider is I will now going to be declaring my variables with data types. So I have gross pay, which is pay hourly rate and hours. So I'm going to be using type double so that I could actually also accept decimal numbers. So I have declaring a double data type for hours, for rate, and for pay. The next thing that I'm doing is I need to be writing my input statements alongside my prompt. Uh, so basically my prompt statements, which will be display, enter hours worked, and input hours. I'll copy paste these two lines and make some changes to them. And then this is the next set of input, enter hourly rate. and then input rate and then finally set pay equals to hours times rate and then finally my display statement which will say gross pay is and then display the pay. This basically is my pseudocode for my program. Now what we're going to be doing next is I will going to be writing a graphical user interface. Now remember in the graphical user interface I need to have two sets of inputs which will be hours worked and the rate. So I'm going to be using my display statement as my labels. Then in my output I need to display the pay so the label for the output will be gross pay. And I'm also going to have a text box to display the output so this will going to be my setup for the code. So let's go to the Visual Studio and let's create this GUI app which will going to help me do this task. So let me bring about all the required labels. I need a label here for my hours worked, then my rate label, and then I need another label for my gross pay. Then I will be going to be needing some text boxes for my output reasons, outputs. So I'm going to be bringing my text box for hours worked, my text box for rate, and finally my text box for gross pay. And then I'm going to be bringing in my button which will going to be the button of action for this code. So let me grab all these objects that I have and just like before let me increase their font size so that it's a little bit more readable on screen for you when you are looking at these tutorials and I highly recommend you look at these tutorials over the uh, in a high definition mode and probably in a full screen if possible because that will going to give you um, or show you things a lot more clear so here we're going to be changing if you have access to two sets of screens and probably you can watch my video tutorial on one set of screen and while you do the assignment on the next set of screen or if you have two laptops and you can watch it on one or two computers watch it on one do it on the other uh, probably makes a little bit more sense to do it that way if you don't have access to one maybe you can try doing split screen or first comes to worst you can always always you know toggle between the windows but here you go so here I have my items changed to font size 12. Let me give some text to these labels. So we're going to be going down to the text property. So my first label we're going to be called hours worked. My next label will going to be the hourly rate. Let me increase the width of this properties pane so that you could be seeing what we are typing. And then the third one will going to be gross pay. Now my button itself, the text that we're going to go on the button will be calculate gross pay. Now since you can't see everything, we're going to be increasing the width of the button so that it can show you everything. Now we're going to be going to changing the text boxes. So the first text box I'm calling txt hours. The second text box I'm calling txt rate. And the last text box I'm calling txt pay. So those are their names. You can very well be changing, you can very well be cha changing the um, text that shows in the title bar for the form, not a requirement. But you can very well do this. Um, and in order to do that, you will going to be going to the text property of the form and then you will going to be uh, changing the text property to gross pay form 
and this will going to change the title bar of the form. Now, after we are done with these things, let's write the code. And before we do that, let's visit the pseudocode once again. In the pseudocode, we declared variables which we have not yet done here, but we have done the display input display input kind of statements. What we need to be doing extra here is we will going to be bringing the inputs that the user is putting in the text box into the respective variables. We're going to be then calculating in the respective variables and then finally dumping the uh, process variable which is to pay into the respective text box. So we'll minimize using objects when not needed. So I'll double click here. Now during the process I double click on the label by mistake so I'm going to get rid of this extra code. Let me zoom in this code and let me shrink the size of the paints that I don't really need so that the code could be visible more and more. Now the first thing I'm going to be doing is I will going to be declaring my variable. So I'm going to just grab the statement and I'm going to write an equivalent VB statement. So we're going to be dimming. We're going to be listing our variables, hours, rate, and pay. And as you have learned in the prior, prior tutorials, that in VB, the variables are declared with the data type, but the data type comes after the list of the variables. And with the help of IntelliSense, you don't have to type a lot of the code. You're seeing green underlines because we have declared variables, but we have not yet used them. So now we're going to be writing the actual statements which we're going to use these variables. So hours, we're going to be getting its value from txthours.txt. Rate, we're going to be getting its values from txtrate.txt. And then the pay will be calculated. Now, if you may remember in the pseudocode, what I did was I wrote this statement in pseudocode, which I'm going to write again here so that you could once again see the transition that in VB will simply say pay equals hours time rate. We just drop the set. We don't need the set here. There's no equal in word that go for set in VB. And now we need to be dumping the value of pay back in txt uh, pay.txt equals to pay. So that will going to take care of that. So now we're going to be running this code. And now it is looking for hours worked. So we enter, let's say, the person worked for 12 hours and got $12 per hour. Per hour. So after I write this statement, as soon as I click on the button, the value, the value from hours worked will actually go in this variable hours. The value from hourly rate will actually go in this variable rate. Then the two will be multiplied to calculate pay. And then the value will going to be transferred from pay into txt pay. That's exactly the execution of the code looks like for now. So as soon as I click calculate pay, here's my 144, which is a product of 12 and 12. So this pretty much suffice the need of our program. However, there's one extra feature that's part of the visual basic code that I would like to introduce over here, not a requirement for the homework assignment. And just so that's something that you may learn extra is how you can go about converting something that is numeric into a currency format. So in order to do that, VB has provided us with the built-in functionality called format. What all it requires is two sets of values. One is the variable that will going to be going as a uh, uh, value, which will going to be in the number form, and the other set of parameter is what exactly you want the format to be. So what we want to tell VB over here is that take the value from the pay, which is a variable of type double or some kind of a numeric variable, and then convert that into a currency format. So now let's run the same code again. We're going to be entering the same sets of values. 12 and 12 and as I click on gross pay here you go so it first calculates the value for pay we'll then going to convert it into a currency format and we're going to then dump it into gross pay similarly if I change the hours work to let's say 12.5 and the hourly rate to $12.35 now it actually calculates in decimals and limits it to two decimal places so so far, what we have done is we have taken the same pseudocode and flowchart that we did and converted that into a graphical user interface. Our next process will going to be to take this graphical user interface or the pseudocode rather, not the graphical user interface, to take the pseudocode and write the console application on the pseudocode. So we're going to be going to File, New, and we're going to be going to Project. 
And now we're going to be choosing console application. We're going to call this one our assignment number three, uh, gross pay console app. So now let me zoom in. First of all, I'm going to be bringing in my pseudocode and we're going to comment all those lines. So just bear with me for a minute. Let's grab all these lines from the pseudocode and let's put a mirror and let's comment these lines as we were going to translate these lines into the equal and VB code. Now this is what VB does. It just puts a parentheses around input. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so this is basically the pseudocode which we're going to get translated into an equal and VB code. Now the first thing first, we're going to be converting the declare statement into the equal and VB statement, which is same in GUI as well as in the console. So you first list all the variables, and then you say, okay, I want it to be of type double. Now the prompts, one by one, system dot console dot write. Once again, we're going to be using write. Enter hours worked. And now we're going to be taking the input from user for the hours, which is coming in to a double value, system.console.readLine. So this takes an input from the user and puts it into hours. Now we're going to be copying and pasting the same statements down below here. Enter hourly rate will going to be our next message and our variables will now going to be for rate. Rest of the code will going to stay the same. Now we will going to come down to calculate the pay. And to calculate the pay, this was the pseudocode, which will exactly, the pseudocode rather should have the word set in it. And the equal in code will be without the word set. So we'll get say pay equals to hours times rate. Now we need to display the output. So system dot console dot write line gross pay is and then we'll use the concatenation operator and followed by the variable pay. And now let's run this program. Control F5, which is a shortcut to hold the screen after the values gets computed. So now we're asking user enter hours work. So we are pretty much, this is where we are in our program. Enter hours work. So we are accepting an input from user, enter hours work. Let's say 12, same input. Then we are down here, enter the hourly rate. Okay, 12, and now here it calculates 144 as an output for us. Now one last thing, we have learned in the graphical user environment how you can go about converting your code uh, to a currency format. Now let's learn how you can do the exact same thing in the uh, console environment. But we're going to take a little different approach here. Uh, we're going to be, since you're using a double in concatenation with a string, and as part of the right line statement, it will going to auto convert it into a string. However, we can take a value which is in number and we can call a special VB function called toString and we can pass it a value of C in double quotes. So what basically this does that it grabs a value from a number and converts it into a string and the C is the code for currency format. So now let's run the same example again, control F5 to hold the screen after the output gets displayed. So here I have enter hours work, same deal, I enter 12, hourly rate, enter 12, and here I have 144.00 with a dollar sign. Now let me run it again, and now enter values like 12.5 for hours work and $12.33 for the hourly rate, and here I have $154.13 with dollar sign incorporated. Once again, this was also not asked of you in the assignment, but something extra to learn. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Best of luck with completing the assignment. Thank you for watching.